Blast me to the mortal realms. It's time for the Mad Merlin's unboxing of Warhammer Age of Sigma Stormbringer issue 2. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Mad Merlin's unboxing. So today we are taking a look at issue 2 of Warhammer Age of Sigma Stormbringer and as the big label says, this brings us 10 Gut Rippers. So these are the brand new uh, basic troopers for your Uruk Waterlands and the Cruel Boys in specific. So we'll take a look at these in a minute. But before we get into anything, don't forget to, of course, give this video a like if you are enjoying the content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And brand new, there is, of course, the Mad Merlin's Patreon. There will be a link in the description for you to sign up and you'll be among the first to get to see my mad content and various other things. I am going to be working on some tiers very soon, so more on that will be coming in my uh, next Merlin Mumbles. But for now, you're here to see some spiky orcs. So... Let's get this opened and we will have a look at issue two. Oh, blimey, there we go. As you can see, we got a lovely um, artwork of Garva Steel Soul there. Looking really cool doing that superhero pose. Do the superhero landing. And on the back we've got a look at our contents. So this is pretty much the contents of issues one, two, and three. And there's issue three itself, getting five Vindic doors for $8.99. So that's not too bad. Just for the basic five band squad, that's pretty cool. And then yeah, that's that. And here we have our issues. So 10 gut rippers. And we also have some awesome new lore to read. Oh, if I can open it. All right, there we go. Whew, that was an ordeal. So, yeah, we also get 10 32 mil bases with the hex hole there. So that's for mounting our models. Five, six, seven... 8, 9, and 10. We get our frame, so I'll have a close look at that in a minute. And then we have our issue. So we've got some awesome lore to cover on the inside. So we'll take a look at that shortly on the overhead cam. So first off, let's take a look at those miniatures. And then we'll take a look through our magazine and I'll give you my final thoughts on issue two. Here we have our frame on the overhead cam. And as you can see, it's pretty chock full of vicious spiky orc boys. And I've already spiked myself on one of the spears while this is in my bag. I had to reach in and get something and I caught the tip of a spear. Ouch, very sharp. But really cool models either way. These are push fit models, so you aren't going to need glue, but do pay, take care when building. I have heard that there are some components that are pretty difficult to get on. So pay close attention to your instructions. So this builds you just 10 basic gut rippers plus a gut ripper boss. This is the frame A from the um, Age of Sigma starter sets. So you can also get 10 Gut Rippers in a multi-part box set on their own, uh, which is 3250 for the 10 models, but it does come with the options of spears and or hand weapons to go along with the shields, plus a banner and a musician, which is pretty cool. These are just your basic troopers with your leader, so nothing special here, and they can only be equipped with the spears and their shields. So 3250 will get you 10 of these, on the multi-part side of things, either that, other that wise, ugh, my tongue is getting tied already. Other than that, these guys are available in all the different tiers of Age of Sigmar starter sets. 
which depending on how well I get on with um, playing and enjoying Age of Sigma, I may end up picking up one or two of them just to see what they're like. Might get the big one just so it gets me some terrain pretty quickly and easily. But I still have a lot of my terrain from uh, Mortal Realms magazine, so I'm in no really ru real rush for that. But really cool looking models, can't wait to put these guys together. So a lot of them have nice scenic elements, which is reed rushes. Very focusing on the Realm of Beasts, I think that one. Oh, it might be meant to be bent. Okay, that's cool. Weird. But yeah, nice scenic detail on their feet, some of them, which helps tie them into their base um, of operations in the Realm of Beasts. Within the swamps of Gur. Yeah, can't wait to build these guys. I'm actually having quite a bit of fun painting the war boss. I uh, need to wait to get a few paints, but because some of the ones I have at the moment are a bit too watery as I put them into drop bottles, and sadly, it's not ideal for picking out the detail on the Stormcast's um, robes. So, having to wait until I pick up the paint tonight when I go out. But yeah. There we go, that is pretty cool. And can't wait to build these guys and get them painted. I'll give them a basic paint job, so just flat colours and a wash. And yeah, they'll look pretty cool. Right then, well, let's take a look at issue two of Stormbringer. I just need to adjust the camera a tad. There we go, that'll do. So, in this issue we get our ten Auric Gut Rippers. There's one of them, how they look. We explore the mortal realms and we learn to use armor. So that's pretty cool. A lot of the previous magazines have um, not covered armor until quite late in the early parts of the issues. I'm watching um, Tabletop Donkey's coverage of mortal realms just for fun at the moment. And they didn't really cover armor till... I think something like issue 10, 11, maybe somewhere around the early teens. But yeah, it's nice that they're actually covering some of the better rules, uh, more important rules, should I say, early on. Uh, I do have a bit of damage on this issue. It's just the front cover and looks like the first couple of pages. But that's from the sprue. I'm not too fussed. I'm not going to be keeping these. As I've said, I am going to be collecting the first five issues at least and then I'm going to be selling off as a small little starter army. So our contents we have read articles for the Mortal Realms, coverage of Grand Alliance order and coverage of Grand Alliance destruction. Our collect articles are Cruel Boys 6 so our gut rippers and Cruel Boys 1 which is all about names for our Cruel Boys. Then we have a build guide, a basics on armor saves and units and then a playthrough for our latest mission. So the Mortal Realms. Battles within the Age of Sigma take place in the Mortal Realms, which are eight worlds made of different kinds of magic. Each realm is a vast landscape that is home to the warring empires and magical miracles. And every realm is filled with incredible treasures and dangers beyond mortal comprehensions. So, yeah. We're focusing here on first four of the realms. So we've got Realm of Life, or Gairan. This is... The realm where Alariel the Ever Queen and her Sylvaneth resides. It's a big target for Nurgle, as Nurgle loves to create his version of life um, in the form of plagues and poxes, etc. So he loves to whittle down, whittle away at other people's lives in order to bring around his own creations. Then we have Chamon, the realm of metal. So this is more um, an ever-changing realm, um, pretty populated by Zinchian demons and cultists, but it's not far off being um, the target of Caradron overlords and sometimes even the Skaven who have a love for pirating as well. Then we got Hish, the realm of light. So this is one of the um, more good aligned realms, much like Realm of Life. 
This one sees the elves being the prominent rulers here, so mostly the Lumineth Realm Lords, who are one of the newest factions to Age of Sigmar. As we see here, we've got a nice load of them all arrayed, ready for war. General off at the front, and one of their giant mountain bull demons. Well, demon, it's not a demon, it's a spirit creature. And then finally, we have the Realm of Death, home to the great necromancer Nagesh, or Nagash, or even not Nagesh. So, Shaiish, Realm of Death. There are a few people who live there, uh, mostly necromancers, some imperial citizens who are um, healers and carers for the dead. But it's mainly ruled by the restless undead. And we see Nagash, Nagash, mm, Nagash even, who loves to rule over the dying worlds. So, got a little bit of information here about the Cosmic Arcane, Cosmos Arcana. So, this is the space between the realms, and in between all the realms is the Realm of Chaos. And above all realms is Azir, the realm of Sigmar himself. Moving on then, we've got background on the forces of order. So this is the Grand Alliance of Order. The Grand Alliance of Order fights to protect the mortal realms and it has held firm against its foes for centuries. It is a shield to the mortal people of the realms and the bane of those who would do evil. The goal for those who fight on the side of the Order is to bring civilization and prosperity to the mortal realms. So when they say Order, they don't often mean good. There are a few factions within the um, Grand Alliance of Order who are a little, shall we say, bloodthirsty or soul-thirsty. I'm looking at you, Daughters of Cain, and you, Ivan F. Deepkin. But yeah, this is basically the Grand Alliance um, still held up by Sigmar and some of the other elven gods, dwarven gods, etc. They fight to ensure that mortals get a strong existence and have everything they need to prosper. So the focus of this collection is three of the factions. So we're looking at the Stormcast Eternals. So these are the reforged souls of ancient warriors eh, clad in Sigmarite armor and sent by Sigmar to defend the mortal realms. We are also going to be getting the Sylvaneth, Alariel's tree spirit kin, who reside mainly within the realm of life, as we've already covered. And then the Caradron overlords. These guys are seafarers, pirates, and they fly around most of the realms collecting a substance known as ether gold. And they're pretty cool, they're a nice steampunky um, faction, really cool. So they use a lot of steam guns, they have these ornate masks which also resemble the beards underneath. Really cool, one of my favourite of the Forces of Order. Okay, so uh, we've got a fold-out section, which is common with all these magazines. So this just tells you what your next two issues are. So issue three is Five Vindictors. If you subscribe via this, you will get issue four, the paint issue for free. And then we got your other um, subscriber gifts here. So free issue, free toolkit, free binders, free mug, free paintbrushes, and a free model. This, of course, is a different model to what we are actually getting, though I would have preferred that one. I do love the Xandria as a bolt model. And then we've also got the premium kits. So we've got the exclusive extra forces if you want to go premium. And this is the contents. So we get Krondis, Son of Dracophian, Gordrak, the Fist of Gork, then we get a small section for the Carriage and Overlords with one of the smaller sky vessels. And then we also get some Dankhold Trogoffs. A uh, Dank, Dankhold Trogoff and some Rock Got Trogoffs. I'm actually painting some of these to sell at the moment. Started them back at Christmas, but haven't got around to finishing them. They're not too far off being finished, so I should be able to get rid of them soon. 
Right, continuing with the magazine then, after that little tangent, so we got the Grand Alliance of Destruction. So some inhabitants of the mortal realms defy any attempts at civilization. They are servants to none, instead living by the simple creed of might makes right. These are the forces of destruction. They are less an alliance and more a primal mob, motivated by a shared desire to fight, kill and destroy anything they can. So, paramount amongst the um, forces of destruction are the Uruk War Clans, which is what this magazine is going to be focusing on. There's also the, um, as we'll see over the page, the Gloom Spike Gits and the Uruks, which, not the Uruks, the Ogor Moor Tribes, which were probably my favourite out of the factions of destruction. So, yeah. So, ones we are getting in this collection are the focus at the front so we've got the iron jaws who are a classic um brutish orc with thick armor plates in bright colors often adorned with skulls of defeated enemies and have very crude big weapons for chopping and slashing and slashing and chopping we also get a collection of Gloom Spike Gits, so I think out of the collection, these guys will be my favourites. Gloom Spike Gits are your little goblins, and they have a good fondness for mushrooms, and reside mostly in the forests of the mortal realms, though some will live in caves alongside their squigs. And most recently discovered of all the Uruks are the Lith and Vicious Cruel Boys. So akin, I think, to the Urukai of the um, Tolkien verse, the cruel boys are, as you guess by the name, very vicious and cruel. They're taller, but by no means less deadly than their more brutish iron jaw cousins. And they have a little bit more of a brain in their head and will often use tactics, which is very unorky. But yeah, really cool models. And it's nice that we're actually getting... Um, Mortal Realms did it as well. It focused on what you got in the issue. But the last one, Imperium, they sort of spread things out over, um, in random orders. This, at the moment, we're getting stuff pretty much in a basic order, so from page one onwards. And it's covering the basic stuff in the whole collection, and a few bits on the individual stuff we are getting per issue, which is nice. So, moving on to our collect articles, we've got the cool, cool boys, not cool boys, Gut Rippers. So Gut Rippers are vicious Auric warriors who form the slimy core of most Cruel Boys armies. Whilst their weapons are crude and the strength and cunning of the Gut Rippers make them a force to be reckoned with. Use the tables below and on the next page to give your unit of Gut Rippers a name and a story. So each Gut Ripper unit is commanded by a boss and the boss his name is usually the name for the um, unit itself. So each Gut Ripper has a shield set in a vicious face, often designed after Squigs, or some will say it's designed after the Orc Gods Gork and Mork. So yeah, we roll a d6 here, and what we get is the background and the name of our Gut Rippers. Over side, we got a table for the unit traits, and then we can name and even tick off Great deeds, so if we slay a hero, we can tick them off. If we use our scare tactics ability to lower an enemy's hit roll, we can tick it off. And here we go, if we roll a six to run, we get to tick off. So we'll be learning more on running, etc. later on. Then we have an overall page for our collection, so when we get more and more cool boy units, we can roll on the tables on this page and over to name our models. So the Cruel Boys have brutish, harsh-sounding names. You can use the tables below and on the next page to name your any Cruel Boy hero or unit in your collection. Simply follow the instructions. So we roll one dice to get a row. So let's see what we get. Three. So, and then we'll roll another d6 for the find that column. 
One, okay. So, Golmor, Golmrog. Wow. Pretty cool. Let's just try again. So, four and six. So, hack. Oh, that's very orcish. Hack, 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 hack. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Then over the page, we've got titles for our heroes and then names for our units. So, what this would be, we take the name of the boss and then add a secondary name. So, four again and four. So, Bane Slitters. So, if we had rolled, say, Rock, it'd be Rock's Bane Slitters for our unit. So, that's pretty cool. Helps us bring our units to life on the tabletop and for all the fun and games behind it. So, moving up, we have our build guide. So, like I said at the start, these are push fit models, but do pay close attention to the build guides as some components need to go on a specific way. Um, I believe someone told me to watch out for model five and nine. Their shield is a bit on the tricky side to get lined up. But as we see here, we are pushing the back and front of the torso together, pushing on the shoulder armor. Then we're lowering the top arm in place before pushing the head and shield in place to finish off our first gut ripper. And then the others are much the same. So I don't think we have any extra components with this. Yeah. It does give you some nice details, like sandwiching component 30 between 29 and 31 to properly attach it. So that's pretty cool. Then again, sandwiching component 39 between 33 and the body. And pushing the shield on. This one here, we just push the loincloth in, then push the two halves of the body together, before gluing, uh, pushing the shield arm and head in. So yeah, number five is one that's a bit on the difficult side. You just got to make sure you don't push too hard on this arm and bend the arm. So you might want to make sure you put a finger against the arm before you, while you push the shield on. So be careful on that. Then six is a very simple one, just three components. Seven is again much the same as number three. In fact, it's pretty much the same as number three, except we've got. Um, a different pose here and a slightly different shield design but other than that the torso is near enough the same slight different design to the loincloth but there we go then part eight so this is another tricky one so we got some various different you got lots of different pegs on here that overlap each other and again we got another arm that you might need to brace against when you push the shield on Finally, number nine here, we have, again, another gut ripper. This one looks fairly easy to get, go together. The head and shield are all one piece and just goes onto the peg. When this one's got the detailed base piece, so yeah, that is meant to be bent. That's awesome. And then finally, we are putting together our boss. So, yeah, parts one, two, four. Five, six, eight. And then we push them down to the base. So we do this. So what it's telling us to do is build all the models and then push them to the base afterwards. I like to base them as I'm going. Right. On to our rules for this issue. So we're looking at armor saves. So all models in the Age of Sigma have a form of armor, be it just a shield or a shoulder pad or full suit armor, much like the Stormcasts. These give a idea of how easy it is for that unit to shrug off damage that they would receive from combat. Then we're also looking at units. So there are two types of units, single models, which are usually characters or heavy war machines, or multiple units, much like our gut rippers here. So when you move with units, you pick one model to move first and move it equal to the move distance. But for the beginning games here, we're just moving from circle to circle. Then fighting each Uruk rolls two dice. So we learn to fight. 
And then, if a unit model is defeated, take two more wounds than their wound threshold. So each gut ripper can take two wounds before being removed. And then we learn about removing our models. So the one thing we will have to learn in for the future, or bear in mind for the future, is that units will have to stay within a certain range of each other. So I think it's usually like two inches. Each model needs to be within two inches of another model in that unit. So yeah. Moving on to our battle for the week. We're looking at the hunt. So a group of orcs are hunting down a Knight Arcanum who has possibly just defeated their boss and is on the run away from the rest of the orcs. So yeah, this does tell you to move your models into the same base, but if you're moving, playing on your own or with somebody else, you can always try moving from different square, different circles to different circles, trying to avoid the fights as long as you can. But when we get into the fights, we roll our dice, put the dice that score hit here. So I've only got the one dice, so let's roll it. It's a miss, so we wouldn't put it there. Roll again, a three, that is also a miss. So Auric's hit on a four. There we go, five, so we'll put the five there so it hit. And then we roll it again. So again to wound, four, five, or six. That's a four, so that would wound, yay. And then the Arcanum takes a save. Who saves on a four, five, or six as well? So no, she doesn't save, oh no. So yeah, that's how that works. And then we do the same for the Stormcart attacks. And then we find out. Who's won? So would it be a Gut Ripper victory or a Knight Arcanum victory? So yeah, practice, do this over and over again, getting used to the rules. Back page, we've got a look at the content collection as a whole and our next two issues. Um, from what I have heard, those that have subscribed have had an email from Hachette. This back page was accidentally printed in the last issue, what it should have been was a set of wound markers, I believe, at the top of it. So you can get the, an email has the attachment, but they will be printed in a future issue if you aren't collecting through the um, subscription. But yeah, subscription offer guarantees you get everything. So, Pretty cool. You do get some really nice models, as I've mentioned in the previous video. I think, personally, I do like the um, Sylvaneth stuff the most. Maybe the Caradrons. But, yeah, I'm not too the biggest fan on Destruction, mainly the Goblins. If it turns out that all the Sylvaneth and all the Goblins come together in a similar collection period, I might try and pick up those issues. I'll we'll have to wait and see because usually Fohammer will tell us what issues are coming when. So yeah. And on the back, last but not least, we've got next two issues. So next week, issue three gives us our five vindictors. We learn about the realm of beasts, which is where our battles are going to be set. And we have a big battle featuring units on both sides and a character on both sides. Issue four then is our first paint issue. And it's a pretty jam-packed paint issue. We get four paints. I think that's the most we've ever had. Um, Conquest issue one, of course, came with three paints, which is McCrag Blue, Abaddon Black, I believe, and Retributor Armor. Or was it Lego Ultra Retributor Armor? No, Abaddon Black and Retributor Armor, because they had tons of both, all three of those paints. But yeah. Getting four paints plus a brush in our first paint issue is pretty good, but we do go down to only two paints per issue after that. I think issue seven is our next paint issue, and that is just a white paint and a flesh paint. But it's two paints I don't actually... Well, I do own the white, but I don't actually own the flesh. But I'll probably just pick up the flesh if I do want it. I am kind of have my own set method for painting flesh. But really good issue, so we are going to learn to paint our first models, first paints, and we get a few new rules on combat, etc. So yeah, we get Lead Belcher, nice silver paint, so we're painting this on our Uruk armor and loincloths and chainmail on the Stormcast, as well as the weapons. Uruk flesh is going to be on all our Uruk models, so mostly for the flesh areas, which there's a lot of it on the Crawl Boys. 
Contour Blue is going to be used for the shoulder pads on our Stormcast and Shields, if you are painting them like this. Personally, I am going to be painting mine as these guys, the Iron Fanes. And they have white shoulder pads, um, but will have a silver trim if they have the trim around the outside. So on these guys, we'd have silver on the top bits there and white with gold icons, which would be pretty cool. We also get uh, Retributor Armour, which is going to be the main colour for painting Hammers of Sigma. But like I said, I won't be doing that. I'll be painting my guys up as the Iron Fane, so I'll be using reds, silvers, blacks, and a little tiny bit of gold. So that was it for issue two. Let's bring the models back in, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this issue. Right. So... Final thoughts for issue two of Imperium. I think it's pretty good. You get tw uh, 10 models for only $5.99. That's pretty cool. Um, there's not much you can get for $5.99 in the way of box sets. It's usually going to be... Um, Uh, like an upgrade kit or maybe a very basic push fit set of models. Getting 10 in our first, well, our second issue really is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't beat Mortal Realms, whose first issue had a total of 13 models, which was 10 chain rasps and three sequitors. But this does give us a nice start to our Gut Ripper army. Uh, or our or cool boy army and next issue we get the storm cast so that hopefully those five will roughly equal these 10 in um fighting ability and that gives us pretty much the contents of the um warrior edition starter set after next next week so we had the two characters last week these guys and then the storm cast next week and that's the same contents as the lowest starter set, which I think is about £32 itself, so not too bad. But like I said, with that £32 box set, you will get um, a box piece of terrain, and you get dice, rules, and a tape measuring stick as well. So it's not a bad price. We've paid, what? $1.99 for issue one, $5.99 for this, and $8.99 for our next issue. So we're looking at about 15, 16 quid, something like that, give or take. So yeah, that's about half the price of Warrior Edition. So very good value. Um, if you are planning on collecting this collection, I would recommend picking up a couple of issues of this, Cruel Boys, will form the basis of a lot of your Uruk um, forces. We are getting two units of Hobgrot Slitters, who are like a lesser version of the Crewboy Uruks here. Um, and they're just basically the cannon fodder of the army. So we get 20 of them over the collection. But picking up an extra unit of these would be a pretty good purchase, I think. Especially for five ninety nine, you can't grumble at that. So, like I said, next issue is the Stormcast. After that's paint, and then issue five, which will be the last issue I'm getting for the moment, and that is our exclusive model for the collection, which is a Praetor Champion. So we can replace the champion in the unit we're going to be getting later on with this rather cool um, exclusive model. So very definitely a five out of five for this issue. Great value, nice content on the magazine. And yeah, these models are gonna look good once built and painted for your collection. But there we have it, that's everything for this video. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. As I mentioned earlier, don't forget to, of course, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, there's all the links in the description down below, including my brand new Patreon. So if you want to be among the first to get to know my mad content, sign up there from as little as £3 a month. 
So, thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time for more mad content. Goodbye.